I am uh, Elizabeth Kai Hinton. I am a professor of African American and African history at Harvard University. It seems that throughout African American history, the the most successful stories that we hear about um, are people who have embraced to some extent or another the politics of respectability. The question is, in doing so, does this kind of lead to larger systemic um, changes or does or does embracing this politics end up, you know, kind of helping to build um, a black middle class that um, in many ways benefits from the same structures of oppression that have maintained racism and inequality in the United States um, for centuries. Professor Higginbotham used the term to kind of capture this idea that a, a conscious choice to, to deal with the impact of racism and inequality um, that has plagued African American communities for centuries um, by kind of embracing the moralities and um, kind of mainstream standards of um, dominant cultures. So that is, you know, to behave, to speak in certain ways that retains in some aspect um, African American um, cultural tropes, but also um, is kind of reflecting in some ways reinforcing um, the standards and, and norms of dominant um, and often oppressive cultures. Looking at kind of the role of individuals um, and individual behavior is important. I think that a lot of times when it's used, it ends up um, moving our attention away from the real kind of issues that underlie um, what that personal responsibility might be. I mean, if you don't have access to, um, you know, as I said, a, a strong kind of a good educational facility that doesn't feel like a prison in itself where you're not like walking through with a metal detector and basically criminalized from a very young age and you're not living in a community where, you know, um, you see more police officers than you do um, social services or more money is spent on policing um, you and your community than on, than on educating or providing fundamental um, human needs like health care and recreational facilities and um, training programs and things like that, I think, you know, it, th that's where the focus of our conversations about this should be more so than, um, you know, once those issues are addressed, then we can begin to talk more about um, what personal responsibility might look like. I think this project is absolutely fantastic. I think that this is one of the, you know, the issues that we face as the black middle class has enlarged. I mean, we are more segregated today than we were before the civil rights movement, but um, you know, black Americans have grown more affluent than they were back in the 60s. There are more black Americans in college, even though enrollments are have declined in recent years, especially as affirmative action goes under attack. But I think that, you know, when we we really focus on issues of um, inequality and, and what it's like to grow up in some of the roughest neighborhoods in the United States. But I think the interstratification in the black community, meaning, you know, the kind of divide between a growing black middle class and low income black Americans has really characterized African American life and culture in the late 20th century. And we know very, very little about um, how the black middle class negotiates their status position. Black students in at universities are mobilized in a way that they haven't been since the civil rights movement. I think these next few years are going to be crucial in terms of rebuilding a student movement. And I think that um, Colin's film can help us understand why and to raise new questions about how to negotiate um, race and class in the 21st century.